We've had quite a challenging month here in August as we have walked together in our series, Belong, Grow, Share, which is our unofficial motto here at North Carroll Cooperative Parish. Since this is the last week of the series, I'll do a little review of the past three weeks and then try to sum things up in what we might call a sending word. And I use that phrase very deliberately, sending word. So look forward to that later. Welcome back to NCCP Anywhere. I'm Dave Stawick, visiting homilist in Washington, D.C. Grace and peace to you in the name of the risen and reigning Jesus Christ. Our text for today, for this final edition of the series, is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. I should say this is shortly after the resurrection. Jesus came near and spoke to them. I've received all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Look, I myself will be with you every day until the end of this present age. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, we'll start with that recap that I promised you, especially since you might have missed a week here in August. A capsule summary of each week, or if you will, the Cliff's Notes of the series. I wasn't actually sure that Cliff's Notes still existed, but I checked it out last night, and they do. And as a matter of fact, there are at least 45 Cliff's Notes on topics from the Bible. So praise be to that. Now, week one was belong. And this was uh, based on Paul's letter to the Galatians, which essentially was talking about how we get along with one another as part of a faith community. Paul began by saying, be guided by the spirit. He said, reject selfish motives and follow the spirit. And he enumerates the fruits of the Spirit, which are worth repeating today. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Uh, we'll hear an echo of that list a little later on. And he closed out with some advice. Let's not become arrogant, make each other angry, or be jealous of each other. Good advice then and now. Second week was grow, and we heard from 2 Peter in the third chapter, which concluded saying, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him belongs glory now and forever. Amen. And as part of our practical ideas of growing here in the church in modern times and at NCCP specifically, we talked about being biblically literate, which is looking at scripture in different ways to understand the underlying meanings and not just memorizing chapters and verses. We also touched briefly upon the Wesleyan notion of striving toward uh, Christian perfection, which uh, John Wesley advocated, uh, which is uh, simply a way of moving toward uh, a situation where we are no longer inclined to sin, at least to commit intentional sins, by the grace of God, through our prayer, through our involvement uh, and immersion in the faith. Last week was week three, and it was share. And again, it was uh, Paul's exhortations. This one was in his letter to the Philippians, where he essentially said to them to imitate Christ. He said specifically, adopt the attitude that was in Christ Jesus. Paul wrote to the Philippians from jail, you may recall, complete my joy by thinking the same way as each other, having the same love, being united, and agreeing with each other. 
So in a sense, it was kind of like the message on belong. So there were the last three weeks. Now, I have to admit that I did not do a lot of advanced thinking about this series in its entirety at the outset. Pastor Melissa framed it up. And I've been taking it pretty much one week at a time because they've been some pretty heavy lifts that have deserved a lot of study and a lot of thinking. But I, I did reflect at the beginning, all right, we've got three concepts, but there are four weeks in the month. So I wonder how we'll handle the last week. Well, we had these great one word themes, belong, grow and share. And then when I read the text from today, in Matthew 28, it hit me right between the eyes that the word for this week should be go. Jesus told them in verse 19, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. This is known as the Great Commission of Jesus. And if you want a quick and pure distillation of Jesus preaching, now here's, this is getting biblically liberate, uh, literate. Um, you have the greatest commandment, which is in Mark, love God, love your neighbor, you know that one. And then today's great commission. Jesus saying, go, share your belief, find me some more disciples. Now it's worth noting this is not the only order to go that Jesus had for his cohorts. In Luke chapter 10, there's the story of the Lord appointing 72 others and sending them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Sounding familiar now? He said, ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Go, can there be a more succinct direction by Jesus to his faithful people, I ask you. It is the shortest sentence in the New Testament. G-O exclamation mark. Not stay home and think about it. Not just hang out in your community, but go into the harvest field that is the population at large. That was from Luke. Today, our reading from Matthew, go and make disciples of all nations. So it's belong, grow, share, and I add go. I think that's how we put a bowl around it. We belong to a community of faith, and we hopefully build each other up. We grow through learning God's word and striving toward the goal of holiness. We share in community with our offerings and receiving the sacraments. And we are molded into proclaimers who go and tell the good news in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. One might say that we are at the end of our path on this final Sunday of August. But I want to encourage us to take a different mindset, and that is that we're actually at the beginning of a journey of sharing life for another year. And fed with the word of scripture and hopefully some food for thought in our sermons, we're left with a final question. How do we go, as Jesus told his followers multiple times, how do we today go out into the world in our own right as modern envoys of Christ and model, belong, grow, share. You probably know by now, I don't like to preach about specific things that you should do according to me. That's simply impossible because only you know your situations, your relationships, your challenges, and your conflicts. It would be presumptuous, if not arrogant, of me to give you exact instructions. But I do think that there are some general things we should trust the Holy Spirit to lead us to do. Things like Paul's earlier list in our time. Things like listening 
and comforting and empathizing, i.e. walking a mile in someone else's shoes, listening some more, encouraging, forgiving, and loving. This world could use more of all of them, especially the listening. Not always easy tasks, no. But recall that we have stressed many times this month, I have tried to repeat this over and over, that even though we may feel overwhelmed by these things that we're being called on to do, seeking Christian perfection or becoming biblically literate or imitating Christ, remember that we are constant recipients of God's grace, God's unmerited favor through the power of the Holy Spirit. We share all these things with the earliest of Jesus' followers through our baptism, through the meal we'll share next week at our locations and the first Sunday of every month. God's grace will always sustain us. This month has been about action, about involvement, about effort, about our work, yes, but always, hopefully, within the knowledge that grace comes first through the Holy Spirit. That was the very first message of the very first text that we read when Paul said, be guided by the Spirit. Be guided, but go. I'm going to leave you with an image that might give us all some encouragement in this journey ahead. It's from longtime friends, classmates from my alma mater, the University of Illinois, Barb and Keith Anderson, good Methodists, who just relocated to South Carolina. Having known each other back in the day, I am sure that poor Keith and Barb are still trying to get their heads around the idea of Dave Stawick as a preacher. I email them links to all my sermons just to prove that I do it, and they are faithful watchers. After last week's message, Barb told me that it reminded her of something that her pastor had recently said in a sermon. And it occurred to me that my old friend had given me a gift of the Holy Spirit that might be a fitting sending word to close today that I promised you at the beginning. And the image that her pastor shared was, breathe in God's grace and breathe out his praises. Isn't that a wonderful idea? Breathe in grace and exhale praise. And I'll add that one of the most blessed ways we can praise God is to live out his son's gospel in the world day by day by belonging, growing, and sharing. Now, let us go, sustained by God's grace, and praising God as we share life with all whom we meet, confident in the promise of Jesus that he will be with us every day. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you lovingly and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.